Standard of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Vultures on the Wing, another adventure of George Valentine. Personal notice, dangerous, my stock and trade. If the future shapes up like a condolence card with a big black border, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Dear Mr. Valentine, because of a stroke of extraordinary luck, an investment of $20,000 promises to yield me a half million. But the transaction must be closed swiftly, tonight. Because with so much money involved, there are naturally vultures on the wing. I sing in the colonnade room at the Savoy Wilton, but I shall be home this afternoon at three. If it is convenient for you. Signed, Maria. You're concerned that there is something questionable about the proposition. Is that it, Mr. Valentine? No, I guess I'm just a creature of habit, uh, Mrs. Burnett, but... Uh... It's, it's Maria to the whole world. Then why not to you and Miss Brooks, of course? Oh, well, let's be real chummy and call me Brooksy. Uh, you were saying, George... Oh, just call me Georgie. Now, I was saying, uh, when 20 grand teases back a half million, I begin to drip with all kinds of doubts. Oh, it's all very legal and terribly simple. All right, you've written a lead. What about the rest of the story? Those vultures on the wing. Yes. Uh, four priceless paintings by Sebastian Zundert were sold to a very high-ranking general when the Nazis occupied Holland. Uh, sold? Yes, uh, the owner was a collaborator. He had no scruples about dealing with the Nazis. So it was all very legal. Uh, go on. These four masterpieces passed from hand to hand by way of Portugal and Argentina to this country. They're still considered among the missing. But I'm in touch with the present owner, and he'll let me have them for $20,000. Uh huh. Bargain sale. Well, how did you and uh, Mr. X get together in the first place? That's where I think I've been very clever, Brooksy. From the Boulevard de la Croisée in Cannes to Ciro's on the Sunset Strip, wherever I've sung, I let my interest in the Zundert canvases be known to the right people. Well, wasn't that a little like shooting blanks and not even having a target? Uh, I reasoned it had to be somebody in the international set. I was right. Last night, after two years, I received a telephone call. So you see... Um, just a minute, Maria. Huh? Oh, uh, Nick, I, I told you to stay in the library. This is a business conference. Well, why don't you have conferences with your husband? I graduated from the Harvard School of Business. Will you please leave us, Nick? No, we're going to have a conference. I don't want any strangers going to start by throwing this gentleman out. <laughs> now, hold it, will you, Buster? What have you been drinking? Singapore slings with vodka? Uh, let go of me. <laughs> Nick, Nick, if you don't behave yourself... Yeah, I know. You'll leave me. Then what would I do when all the bottles got empty? Not in front of these people, Nick. Please. Uh, pride, self-respect. Most important, of course. Uh, go on with your conference, darling. That's better. You may not think so, but I did graduate from a Harvard School of Business. Forgive the interruption. But, uh, as I said, George... Yeah? The plan for tonight is terribly simple. You are to pick up the briefcase with the Zunderts in the colonnade room. You are my accident insurance to make sure that everything goes off smoothly. We have just about ten minutes before you meet the man with the briefcase down in the lobby. Oh, this is just about my cue to go to the powder room with this briefcase full of old newspapers under my rack. Right. And on the way back, make certain everybody in the place knows you've got it. 
Do you really believe anybody will think we've made the swap in the powder room, This George? operation is strictly cloak and dagger, Brooksy, so let's play along. Well, what have I been doing up to now? Well, the point is, if there are any interested parties in the offing, they'll stick right here with me and your briefcase. While you go downstairs and claim the other one and get over to Maria's. Well, here I go. I just hope my briefcase isn't showing. <laughs> I was hoping the young lady would leave so I could have a moment with you, Mr. Valentine. Okay, I'll take out the stopwatch, friend. Running errands for Maria? Charming creature, isn't she? I'm Alfred Steger. Steger Art Galleries. Oh, so you know me. No, I've been lucky up till now. Maria the darling might very well become the proud owner of four perfectly breathtaking Zunderts tonight. You don't say. But the poor pet is always at such loose ends. She might very well lose these treasures. And if by some chance they found their way to me, you might very well find yourself $5,000 richer. How did you get hold of the information, Steve? Good heavens, man, you should know. Hasn't Maria even mentioned my name? I really believe I feel slighted. Oh, you'll bounce back. Just because I'm considering double-crossing her doesn't mean I don't think the world of the dear girl. However, what have you to say about being $5,000 richer? Scruples, awkward things, always getting in the way. But think it over, Valentine. Ah, good evening, Steger. Oh, Van Brooklyn. Would you mind returning to your table so I could speak to Mr. Valentine? Uh, now look here, old man. Oh, please, boys, don't fight over me. Please do not make me ask you again, Steger. Oh, very well. I was quite through anyway. Oh, by the way, Van Brooklyn. Yes, why don't you drop around at my galleries? I have some excellent reproductions. Why do you speak to me of reproductions? Because these might fool even you, despite your reputation as a connoisseur. Good night. You belong in this act, too, Mr. Van Brooklyn? In a manner of speaking, I am to act, Mr. Valentine. Oh. If Maria has deemed advised to hire you to ensure the safe transfer of the Tsunder canvases tonight, that is her affair. But I must make sure you understand one thing. Well, now, just understanding one thing would be a great improvement. The $20,000 Maria entrusted to you belongs to me. She is merely a commission agent. Someone I hired more than two years ago to make it known in the right places that I was in the market. I'd like to know who isn't in the market for those things. I myself am merely a representative of a syndicate. A group of men who intend to acquire those paintings at any cost. So it would be more sensible if you made sure they found their way to me. Mr. Van Brooklyn, at the moment I'm playing bouncy ball with Maria. Now, if you want to get in on the game, you'd better talk to her. Otherwise, somebody might get hurt. I see. Well, I'm afraid I must leave you. Your lovely companion is returning. It was a great pleasure. Oh, don't mention it. Who was that sinister character with a beard? His eyes look like a couple of boiled onions behind those thick glasses. Who is it, Later, Brooksy, later. Let me have that. You can't say everybody in the place doesn't know I came back with a briefcase. I did everything but play catch with it. Yeah, I saw you. Now go on and get the one we really want. Yeah, okay, George. But be a nice, peace-loving decoy, darling. I want you back all in one piece. Okay, go on now, Angel. Get on your tricycle. Yeah, okay. See you at Maria's. <laughs> nice rent you've got there, Valentine. Well, thank you. I've got very good taste. Except in the kind of people I seem to attract to this table. Why don't you be satisfied? Stay away from Maria. How are you, Buster? And don't tell me I can find out at any post office by just looking at your picture front and side. Maybe you've heard of me, Jim Fowler. <laughs> I hope you noticed I just went pale. Hey. Now you shut up all over and listen. What's going on over there? Maria and me are friends. Good friends, Catch. That's cozy, Fowler. I want you to stay away from her, and I want that briefcase you picked up for her tonight. I'll give it to her in her dressing room. As you were, Jim. Reach like that again, and you're going to leave some fingers on that table when you say goodbye. You're not very smart, Valentine. On your way, Pixie. I got things to do. Are oh, you the muscle boy for Van Brooklyn, Steger, or Fowler? Get inside, or you're going to collect yourself a lot of holes that'll spoil your appearance. And give me that briefcase. Suppose I pout. You're not going to shoot me down on the street, are you? Try me. Get wise, stupid. You're playing with the older boys now. Get in. Hey, Brooks.
Roxy, what happened? Uh, well, it's all pretty vague, George. I, I got here just before you, George. Hurried here after my last show. I found her on the floor. Yeah. And, and the paintings she brought, they're gone. Yeah, well, we'll get to that in a minute. Hey, you sure you're feeling better now, Angel? Yes, darling, I think so. I, well, I came right here, just as you told me. And when I opened the door, it, it was all dark. And then, Zowie, somebody hit me. Uh-huh. Hey, has your husband, Nick, been over there like that all the time? I don't know. I found him that way with his head down on the table. He's no good to anybody. Well, George, you don't look fresh as a buttercup yourself. Where have you been? Somebody wanted a briefcase full of newspapers so bad they floated me out of town. I had to walk back till I got a cab. Oh, but the pictures... I told you, I told you, we'll get to that. And the next time around, I'm going to get the truth from you. Right now, I want to see if your husband here knows anything we ought to know. All right, you. Hey, Burnett. Come on, Burnett, snap out of it. Come on, sit up in the chair. Nick! George. Oh. Yeah. One of our uh. friends fixed it so that Nick will be stone cold on the hottest day in July. Return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. If you're driving a new car, you're probably getting a lot of pleasure out of its smooth performance. But wait until you try a tank full of new, improved Chevron Supreme gasoline. It gives car performance to delight the heart of every motorist. Thanks to special blending agents, new Chevron Supreme gives your car faster starts and faster warm-ups. It gives your car new alertness in traffic, ping-free power to lift your car over hills. In fact, for today's high-compression engines, you can't buy a better gasoline. And premium-quality Chevron Supreme is climate-tailored. So wherever you drive in the West, no matter what the temperature or altitude, you'll agree new Chevron Supreme gets the best out of your car. Try a tank full tomorrow. Get it at standard stations and at independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine, a glamorous lady known simply as Maria to the international smart set sends you on an errand, namely to drop off 20 grand and pick up four paintings. Then various and sundry personalities start double-crossing each other all around you to snare the above-mentioned canvases. And as an added Philip, Maria's husband is found stabbed to death. Momentarily, you bide your time, which if you're anything like George Valentine, you devote to cerebral contortions while Lieutenant Riley does the talking. Uh, Mrs. Burnett, did your husband know all three of them? I mean Ben Brooklyn, Steger, and Fowler? Yes, more or less. Uh Uh-huh. Well, I've got an all-points bulletin out for them. We'll have their stories in the morning. Right now, I want to get the picture here straight. Now, uh, Miss Brooks. Yes, sir. You're sure there isn't anything you forgot to tell us? No. It, uh, it was dark. I hardly got in the door. Then I thought I saw somebody looking at me. Well, then that may be imagination. I came here directly from the Savoy. Wilton. anybody can tell you okay, that I... Okay, Mrs. Burnett, okay. Nobody is questioning your alibi. Uh, anything else, Miss Brooks? Come on, think hard, Brooksy. Yeah, well... Just as I passed out, I... I I remember hearing a loud noise. Uh-huh. A crash of some kind. That's all. Hey, Riley, that means the lamp on the stand over there were knocked over when the murderer was leaving. And not in the struggle with Burnett. Uh, back to the same thing. They both knew each other and there was no struggle. But, Valentine, maybe you can explain something else to me. Hmm? The bloodstains near the foyer door and Burnett lying with his head on the table a good dozen feet away. How did he make the trip with the knife in him, and why no signs of blood in between? Yeah, I've been kicking that around too, Riley, but it keeps bouncing back at me. Yeah. Well, we'll leave the whole thing until tomorrow when I know a lot more than I know right now. Well, good night. Oh, uh, you'd better stay put, Mrs. Burnett. Oh, we'll come along with you, Lieutenant. All right. May I see you a moment, George? I'll be right there, Brooksy. Yeah, Maria? You're not walking out on me, are you? 
I... I need you more than... I need you more than ever now. I can't imagine you needing anybody. But if it's going to make your dreams any sweeter, I'll be seeing you in the morning. Better get your story straight. I know you are very anxious to speak with Maria Valentine, but I thought it would be wise if I talked to her first this morning, uh, so there would be no misunderstanding. What does he mean, Maria? I'm sure Mr. Van Brooklyn tends to tell you that himself. But first, may I explain this patch of court plaster on my cheek? Yeah, looks like somebody set out to make a veal cutlet out of your face. Fortunately, the thugs who attacked me took my word that I do not have that so I know where they are which is true. Sounds like Fowler's boys on the job. The important thing is to restate the bargain I made with you, Maria. A liberal bonus if you located the paintings and to consummate the deal, $20,000 at your disposal, for which I have a receipt. What have you got to say, Maria? Perhaps she will speak more freely after I leave. Just remember, Maria, I expect you to produce the money... Or the pictures. All right, sweetheart. Let's scrape off all the fine-fingered intrigue and see what we've got here. Oh, George. George, I... I've been so alone. So frightened. No fun getting caught in your own squeeze, is it? Come closer. Yeah. George, I'm in love with you. Brother, you must be really scared to stagger into that routine. Don't talk like that. I suppose now I'm expected to rush out and get those undits for you. That's a lie. I, I swear I was thinking of us, what the future would be like with all that money. Which wouldn't belong to you. Now, let me tell you what the score is. I sent Brooksy over to Steger's galleries to ask a few questions, and I... Mm. Mm. Well... well... Don't give me that used-up smile. I'll admit, that's one from my memory book. We're still in business. I'll let you know when I'm taking in my sign. Now, you listen. I've measured all the angles, Maria, and I think I know the setup. Maybe even a little better than you do. I'm listening. About two years ago, Fowler slithered into your life. He was the kind of tough-minded male you liked. An exciting contrast, a Nicky boy who was always lit up like a busy switchboard. No character analysis, darling, just the facts. What if I told you your boyfriend moved in on you, shoulder holster and all... After working out a deal with Van Brooklyn. What? But they don't even know each other. I'm guessing it was Fowler who sicked the Dutchman on you. To suggest you pass the word about the pennies to your friends. The former black marketeers, the run-down royalty, the professional sophisticates. You can't make me believe that. Those two had split the fancy fee Van Brooklyn Syndicate was willing to pay. That is, if one or the other wouldn't work a double cross. Why, those two conniving... Makes sense, doesn't it? But then you and Brother Steger were going to pull a fast one, too. As an art dealer, he could not only okay the pictures, but find the right market for them. Really? Then you could pay back the 20 grand and say you weren't going to play anymore. Very well. I admit that. <laughs> but there's more, Maria. Steger was all primed to cross you. What? Made me a proposition. 5,000 if I delivered those masterpieces to him. <laughs> what an unholy mess. And if it's all... If it's all true. Listen, George. If you play this right, you can still... <gasps> Well, hello, Fowler. I told you to stay away from her, Valentine. Bad memory, one of my worst faults. Go over him, Batsy, see if he's carrying a rod. Stand still while I fin you, bud. Never mind, here you are. Jim, what are you going to do? We'll talk later. Hey, look at this fancy heat of this guy cuts around, Mr. Fowler. Look at me. I'm the Green Hornet. I got a whole army coming at me. But I go... Where did you pick that up, Fowler? Well, Batsy is missing a couple of brain cells. He reads too many comic books. But he does what I tell him, and that's all that matters. Valentine, where are those pictures? I got the same story I gave your boys last night. I wouldn't know. Jim, is it true about you and Van Brooklyn? Sure. Yeah. Like I said, we'll talk later. Batsy. Yeah, Mr. Fowler? Drag this paper over to my hotel. Keep him there. He's got a lot of talking to do. If he doesn't, he's not going to walk back from this ride. Look, look at me now Oh, please, please, no more, Batsy Now, will you stop waving that gun? Now I'm the heavyweight champion oh. yeah. Bam, biff, bang, he's down hey, 
One, two, three, hey, four. Hey, 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 Patsy. Huh? There's somebody at the door. What? Oh, hey, one squawk out of you and you know what you get. I know, I know. What's more, I believe. What you want, sister? I'm here to clean up Mr. Fowler's suite. I ain't got all day, you know. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, I didn't know you had company. Oh, but I can clean around the gentleman if he'll just cooperate. Wow, you're a cute kid. How about you cooperating with me? We might get places together. Oh, fresh, ain't you? Uh, come on, come on. Make a snap and get through. Gee, you've got a funny voice, mister. Huh? Oh, didn't you know? You're talking to a frog with a man in his throat. Now, listen here, you... He looks like an overgrown meatball to me. That's all from you, babe. He looks like a punch-drunk fighter with a hot foot. <laughs> I warned you, babe. Now I'm going to play marbles with them pretty blue oh, eyes. George! That does it. Oh! Impolite to turn your back on it. Yes! Oh! Jeepers. D did you see the size of his hands, Easy, George? Wait till I get his gun. Hey, you were oh, terrific, boy. Angel. What blessed little voice guided you from Steger's over here? Steger's own sweet falsetto. Huh? Well, when I walked into his galleries, I heard Steger screaming blue murder in the back. Somebody was giving him a going oh, over. Oh, Fowler's really covering territory today. And then I heard Steger cry out your name. Yeah. Then somebody said Fowler was taking care of you at his hotel. I mumbled something and backed out of the place. Oh, if I had the time, Angel, I'd kiss you. Oh, I ought to get something for the five bucks I slipped the chambermaid. Now we got to give this place a double quick canvas for those Zunderts. Yeah, but if they were here, George, why would Fowler be picking up assault and battery charges all over the city? I don't know, Brooksy, but there are a couple of weird angles that keep popping up in my mind like three blind mice. Such as? Well, never mind now. Get on the phone and ask Riley to get our all-star cast at Maria's. <laughs> Ladies and uh, <clears throat> gentlemen, you will notice that one member of our little group is missing. Yes. That's Mr. Steger. Why, uh, in the morgue. <gasps> what? Oh, no. Yes. Yes, your uh, gunsels put a little much in too much enthusiasm in their work, Fowler. You're not pinning this on me, Lieutenant. And I'm clamming up till I see my lawyer. That's your constitutional right. Mm. Uh, let me have those paintings, Valentine. Here you go, Lieutenant. You found them. They're mine. I can produce a receipt for the money I advanced Maria. Where'd you find them? Where were they? In your place, Buster. Right under a neat pile of your monogrammed undies. Which adds up to this. Fowler, I'm holding you for the murder of Nick Burnett and Steger. Can I uh, call my lawyer? I don't know what you were trying to get out of Steger, but that'll come out in time. Wait, Lieutenant. Yeah? Somebody planted those pictures in his apartment. What? Well, what do you mean? But that sounds crazy, George. Why? Maybe mine here, Van Brooklyn, can tell us. I? Uh, who was willing to spend a fortune to secure those sundots? Yes, Valentine, that doesn't make much sense. Oh, but it does, Lieutenant, it does. With Fowler framed for murder, you wouldn't have to split with him, Van Brooklyn. The paintings were bound to find their way back to you. You have legal ownership. Maria's receipt. Absurd. Mere speculation. When Miss Brooks walked in here last night, she thought she saw two eyes staring at her. They were the glint from those egg-sized lenses you use for glasses, Van Brooklyn. That's right, George. Oh, I'm sure... The noise Miss Brooks heard after she was hit was you crashing to the floor with a table in the vase. That's when you got that gash in the cheek. Nobody's been slamming you around. Then... Then it was his blood in the foyer, not Burnett's. Yeah. The lab tests will prove that beyond any doubt, Riley. You're pinned down like a butterfly, Van Brooklyn. <laughs> well, what's the joke? <laughs> These pictures. People have bought and sold them, degraded their souls and spilled blood for them ever since I first put them on the market in Europe. What of it? Just this. They did it because these are masterpieces, art in its most sublime form. I know all this because I have followed their trail across the world. There's no syndicate. No one but me. I want them back. And do you know why? Because I painted them myself. Oh, listen. Yes, you yes. Painted them. I fooled the entire art world. The greatest hoax in the history of art. With my failing eyesight, I knew I would never paint again. But I would have these as a tribute to my talents. Yes. And after I died... They would be accepted as the best things Zundert ever did. Please. Valentine, 
It would be possible for me to keep them with me until they... I don't know why not, Van Brooklyn. You've paid for them. No, Brooksy, Fowler's goon squad merely gave Steger a good roughing up. Van Brooklyn delivered the coup de grace. Oh, George, the reason sounds fantastic. Even though I know it's true. Yeah. Van Brooklyn was that fabulous character the papers were full of after the war. He sold a million dollars worth of fake art to Goering and company. Steger recognized him despite the beard. Yeah, this shindig takes the cake for pure concentrated finagling. <laughs> yeah, awful tempting, all that, though. Mm. Hey, no, Angel, just out of curiosity, what would you do if you found a half million bucks? Oh, well, let's see. Well... If it belonged to a poor person, I'd return it. To a poor... Okay, don't explain it. The pain will go away in a few minutes. For the greatest motoring pleasure you've ever enjoyed, let me remind you again of new Chevron Supreme Gasoline. For today's high-compression engines, you just can't buy a better gasoline. That's because new Chevron Supreme gives your car faster starts. It gives your car faster warm-ups, too. New pep in heavy traffic driving. Power to lift your car over the hills with never a ping. And it's a premium-quality gasoline that's climate-tailored. That means it's specially blended for each different altitude and temperature zone in the West. So wherever you drive, try a tank full of new Chevron Supreme, and you'll agree it gets the best out of your car. Get it at independent Chevron gas stations and at standard stations, where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. Next week, when we again catch up with George Valentine, we'll hear an incredulous Brooksy say... Oh, don't be so smug, George. Didn't you hear me? The man wants you to prove he's a murderer. Well, no accounting for taste, Angel. Oh, he must be crazy. Maybe, maybe. Well, no sane person would write a letter like that. Still, he raised a very interesting question. He wants to know if I'm an imbecile. What do you think, Brooksy? Are you going to take this letter seriously? Uh Uh-huh. Hmm. Then the answer to his question is yes. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Francis Robinson as Brooksy. Wally Mayer appears as Lieutenant Riley. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Herbert Little Jr. and directed by Don Clark. Also heard in the cast were Maria Palmer as Maria, Ted DeCorsia as Van Brooklyn, Leo Cleary as Steger, Ed McDonald as Fowler, Barney Phillips as Nick, and Frank Richards as Patsy. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.